Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. God bless you. Let her welcome you. Our lovely, our lovely bride this morning. A special welcome to everybody here this morning. Welcome to the family sanctuary, the People's Branch of Bukit Bible Church. You are most welcome. We want to welcome your friend, your neighbor sitting by your side. Give him a good hand, wave, smile, and let them know you are glad to see them. special Sunday this morning. Bishop has put together this program to break the fast for us here in Bukit Bible Church. It's not a church where where all the speakers speak out and preachers sit and pastors blow and blow. We just speak and try to listen to God. So it's within the church. It's the way we develop the Bukit Bible Church. The Lord has blessed us.
somebody giving a baby to those days. Today is a birthday package. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I heard Mrs. Nanami said something about testimony. The need for us to testify. And this morning I'm going to speak on the power of testimony. The power of testimony. Somebody say the power of testimony. There are three people, the power of testimony. You see, God is God is always good. Always. His nature is good. So we always say God is good. And normally we all respond all the time. Can I say God is good? God is good. God is good. All the time. God is not only good, God is faithful. He will always be good. He will, he will always be faithful. It's important that every day of our life we recollect his goodness to us. His goodness in small ways, in big ways, we must always recollect, we must always remind ourselves that God is good. See, the things God has done in the past is a pointer to what we can expect him to do for us now and in the future. Yeah. So when you play back what he did for you in the past, you are motivated, you are encouraged to trust him for what he can do for you now and to trust him for what he can do for you tomorrow. And there are several instances in scriptures where we are encouraged to recount the goodness of God in our lives. Psalm 103 verse 2. Psalm 103 verse 2. The New King James Version. Psalm 102 verse 2. The New King James Version. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord, O my soul, forget not all his benefits. And one of the ways you forget not his benefits is to recollect his benefits. Recollect. You see, our mind is a very powerful tool. You can use your mind to play back or you can use your mind to, to uh, imagine you can use your mind to imagine, imagine things. So you can use your mind to recollect what God did for you some months ago, some days ago, or some, some years ago. That is why we have a platform for testimony in the church every Sunday to recollect what the Lord has done. <coughs> Amen. Amen. See, there's, there's, there's a misnomer, a misnomer in our way of thinking. What I call misnomer is sometimes a mistake in our way of thinking. Sometimes we, we, we like to forget the gains and remember the pains. The average human being has a tendency when they are going through pain to forget the gains. See, but some of our past gains, Sussex, 
are bigger than the present challenges. See, presently you might be going through something and you think it's so huge. But if you can remember some huge challenge you had in the past when God delivered you, it makes the present challenge very insignificant. We are very skillful at playing back the pains and very unskilled at recollecting the good things that happened to us in life. Let me repeat. We are very skillful at playing back the pains, very unskilled, inept at recollecting the good things that happen to us in life. There are many good things that have happened to us. Recently, I clocked 59 years old. Mommy clocked 55, 57 years. Next year, June, I'll be 60. Mommy will be 58. So many things have happened. There have been pains. There have been gains. But let me tell you something. The gains the gains supersede the pain. Amen. On Cheribian, the missing fear, the Numacuno, Namuka, who's a fear, the numerous son, Nayash and Nabra, for my how I could talk, and a down name from Sayakan, Papa, now, or so son, a brand I have. If you if you read some 77 from verse 1 to 6, or from verse 1 to 14, the, the psalmist, as up, um, as it were, is so emotionally challenged. And he's wondering whether God is who he is. And he, at a certain stage, he questions God's capacity and God's goodness in terms of what he was going through. In fact, the psalmist Asaph behaves like all of us normally behave when we are going through problems. And in verse 7 to 14, he asks some questions, and I'm going to, I mean, let's read maybe for verse 7 to 9. He asked some questions, and I'm going to be asking the same questions. Psalm 77, verse 7 to 9, the New King James Version. Verse 7 to 9, the New King James Version. He says, will the Lord cast off forever, and will he be favorable no more? Can I have some answers here? Can I have some answers here? Would, would the Lord do that? Would the Lord cast off forever? I say, would the Lord cast off forever? I can hear you. Will he be favorable no more? Look at verse 8. Has his mercy ceased? Forever. Come on, as his mercy sees forever, as his promise fade forevermore, has God forgotten to be gracious? As he in anger shut up his tender mercies, no. Can I have a big no here? See, sometimes. We allow present distress, present difficulty to cloud our memory and make us lose thought of some of the wonderful things the Lord has done and is still doing in our lives. Amen. Amen. This, last night, all of us went to bed. You, you slept. I know some of us struggle in our sleep. I can't sleep before 11. 
I've, I've programmed myself. I have to sleep after 11 o'clock. But ultimately, I'm able to sleep. None of us can es 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 explain the dynamics of sleeping. But the psalmist said that I slept and I awoke mm. for the Lord kept me. So one of the good things in life is that Every morning when you wake up, it means God has kept you. If you, are, if you have nothing to be thankful to God for, thank God that you woke up. Look at someone's face and tell them, I thank God I woke up this morning. So tell another person, I thank God I woke up this morning. Because somebody went to bed last night, they didn't wake up. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They didn't wake up. One, sir. I have a recorded story of Michael Jackson's days. I saw it on Facebook and I saved it. How Michael Jackson struggled to sleep. Every night he has to be in all kinds of medication so that he can have a small sleep. And these are some of the wonderful things the Lord is doing for us. Amen. 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 That you can sleep. If you have nothing to be thankful to God for, thank God that you went to bed last night, you woke up still lying in your bed, not hanging in the air. See? Love, 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 love something else at the same time. Fall into my, fall into my dress. I just took a tea and a snack. Some sandwich. And the menu at Miss Woman Mort, so I can share the So the psalm is that. Uh, has God forgotten to be gracious? And then verse 10, he says something. I'm going to preach a lot on verse 10, 11, 12, and 13. Verse 10. And I said, this is my anguish. The, the anguish was what we read in 7 to 9. The anguish he was going through. The questioning, questioning God's integrity, God's capability. It says, but I will remember the years of the right hand of the most high. It's, see, I will remember. You can choose to remember or you can choose not to remember. See, sometimes when the difficulties are come, sometimes you choose to close your mind to every, any good thing God has done. But the psalmist says, I will, I make a choice. I will remember what the Lord has done. It, it is one of what I call the resources God has given us to sustain momentum in life. The power of remembrance. And our willingness to remember what God has done and to ignore what the devil is doing. See, sometimes we magnify what God is doing above what God, we magnify what the devil is doing above what God has done and is doing. Daddy, that is amazing. That's it. Maybe, maybe you cry. Some years ago, you were jumping and dancing in church for what God has done. But you, you take a decision 
to dwell on what the devil is doing I want to challenge you this morning and to provoke you to apply the power of remembrance remember what the Lord has done the years of the right hand of the most High. verse 11 says I will remember the works of the Lord surely I will remember your wonders of old I will also meditate on all your work and talk of all your deeds oh come on somebody I like amen. that amen Oh, I, like. I will also meditate on all your work and talk of your this. I like this verse in the new. I like this verse in the New Living Translation. New Living Translation, verse fourteen. Is it verse twelve? It says they are constantly in my thoughts. Come on, somebody. Constantly in my thoughts. What God has done what God is doing hallelujah Amen. he says I cannot stop thinking about your mighty works See, when you say mighty works it is relative to the agency of the time and the relief it offers let me say that for some of the mighty works let me, let me repeat the statement I made it's a very powerful statement the mighty works is relative to the agency of the hour and the relief the works office. So for somebody, mighty works is 100 cities or 150 cities to pay my daughter's KG fees. For somebody, that's mighty works. For somebody, mighty works is the healing of my my finger, little finger, mighty works. Recently, the Lord worked a mighty work in my life. I had a problem on my gum. And my dentist and his colleagues did all the best they could to help me. But what pain? It was painful. So painful. My gum, oh. gum, so painful. And when I got relief, eh? when I got the relief, oh, what gladness! What gladness! So them easy. Last week, last two weeks, I'm called Takwa. I stopped over at uh, Love Sanctuary, not Bishop Clement, or not Bishop uh, Pastor Cross, but they wanted me to st- just stop over for a discussion. Ain't he? stop over. Me, uh, Pastor Cross, my new office. Also, Bishop, you've trimmed down. Is that so? I can't eat. And I woke at Takwa. I find a way. Only bad two weeks, me, Zipa. Also, I'm going to see that. 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 I'm going to that now the pain is gone and now I can smile and I can eat and I can sleep without medication. Amen. It's a mighty work. So mighty works is relative to the agency and the relief. So all of us, our mighty works are different. He put your mighty works, man. Yeah, my light, you know. So for that, I'm a man more to be. I have mighty works. Most most money, most money, most move out top. Time I saw walk or walk, saw this move on ZBI. I know move ZBI. I know who honey, na one no me. Who is honey? What's that? Better honey, yes, you have most of your time. I saw a lot of honey, don't do. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Psalm 77. I like it so much. Verse 11 again. The New Living Translation verse says, But then I recall all you have done, O Lord. 
I remember your wonderful deeds of long ago. They are constantly in my talks. I cannot stop thinking about your mighty works. You see, every one of God's doings in our life counts. It counts for present challenges and future challenges. So that the acts of God in our life need to be packaged, documented for transgenerational benefits. The acts of God in our lives, what God has been doing, they must be packaged, properly packaged. That's why I'm going to suggest that in future, all the testimonies we record here, it's time to document them. We need to constantly or continually rehearse the Lord's doing in our lives. Say it the more, because many more are yet to experience what you have experienced. Hallelujah. Amen. Say it the more. Or that can be brave. Recently, we watched God mighty miracle for Reverend and Mrs. Taki. After 11 years of marriage, they got their first boy. We don't have to sweep these things under the carpet. We must write it, document it, have a testimony manual where the next generation can read and tell of the Lord's goodness that in the days of my father, yeah. God was good. In the days of our fathers, the Lord blessed. So it means the Lord will bless us again. So when awkward challenges read their heads, quickly play back. Because awkward challenges will come. One day you will go to the hospital, they'll do you a test, and then the diagnosis could be scary. Scary diagnosis. And sometimes you wonder what you are going to do. And you forget the previous diagnosis where the Lord showed up. Where the Lord intervened, Amen. where the organs of your body were restored to full Amen. earth by the mercies of the Lord. You see, God is a good God, and Amen. God is always faithful. Yes. See, the actors in the book of Acts, we have long gone. But, but the recorded acts are still resounding. I believe that the book of Acts, you see, the book of Acts, even though one one end with any greetings, because the book of Acts has not been finished written. Look at the last verse in the book of Acts, on the on your conclusive. So the book of Acts is still being written. Hallelujah. Amen. In the book of Acts, we don't have any record of people who got married 11 years and the Lord gave them a. It's not in the book of Acts. So the book of Acts is still being written. Amen. It's because the Acts of the Apostles were the Acts of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is still acting. Listen, that challenge you are going through, let me tell you, it is so small in the eyes of God. Yes. That challenge you are going through, yes. relative to the challenge people went through, God is going to show up. Amen. The Lord is going to work a miracle. Amen. The Lord is going to intervene in your life yes. to let you know that He is still God. I have a testimony. What does the sum? 
That testimony is about 26 years old. In 1991, into our was it about our seventh year of marriage then? We married in 1985. So 91 is yeah, six years. Six years into our marriage. Mommy had to undergo a surgery. No, there yeah, mommy, okay, to remove some growths in her body. The surgery was at the Cape Coast District Hospital then. That was the main hospital. In the district hospital, now we had them surgery. Surgery by Dr. Jade. Dr. Jade, no, yeah. If he was alive, he would testify what I'm saying. The surgery was on Tuesday. Now, what is the kind of kind of By Thursday, mommy was doing fine. So Jade was thinking that maybe by Saturday they will discharge her. Saturday I went to visit her and then she had started having a running tummy. Her first meal that she had taken at that time was porridge. Now it's been all the kind of ways in the membrane your cocoa. According to med- medical folks, normally when you have surgery, you must start on tea. The mommy is anti tea. Now that's a full me and it say that was a second can wait, but no the kind of days ye tea. No on pity. Oh no, any no. So them they thought maybe we could start there on some light cocoa. So she took the cocoa, I think Friday or said or about. So what can I but to me I shall see I'm in cocoa to buy a memory doubt and feed that no num cocoa. Saturday running stomach. Sunday, the running stomach got worse. So they moved there from the ward to the intensive care unit. Sunday morning, I passed by before I went to church and she was still running on drips. They started putting her on drips. Sunday afternoon, I was... My plan was to go home, eat something, and then come back to the hospital. We were at the hospital when one of the staff came to the house. He said, Pastor, um, our nurse on duty wants to see you now. Now. Pastor Jake, my associate then, was at home. Pastor Charles was at home. Some of the brethren. On every Sunday, there's a lot of people at home. So I rushed to the hospital. Just before I entered, the nurse on duty, I've forgotten the name, like the, uh, the faces. Still, and then she called me aside and said, Daddy, we almost lost mommy. I said, What happened? He said, We were all sitting now in the desert, we were laughing. All of a sudden, mommy sprang up from the bed with all the drips on her. And so the, the nurse said that they rushed to her bed. And according to her, when they rushed to her bed, she passed out. Not faint, she died. I have a testimony. Mommy has a testimony. She passed out, according oh, oui. to the nurse. Oh, oui. When somebody passes out, they have some first step procedures they use to see whether you are gone or not gone. Okay. So they will normally hit you, call you, and then what they did, they, they said they gave her an injection. I always forget it. Vic always remind me. I gave her hydrocortisone. So be wild, the town, the way a BB, what friend, what one, now one man, draw by, now what's your friend, hydrocortisone. I'm told hydrocortisone, if somewhere, in, either the blood is not in the heart or the, it will draw the blood somewhere and then maybe can quicken your heart or the. When they gave her the injection, all of a sudden she woke up. I want to draw by with free man or sorry. And two words came out of her mind. When she woke up, according to the nurse on duty, the nurse on duty told me this. As when she woke up, she screamed, I shall not die. I will pray in tongues and live. 
I shall not die. I will pray in tongues and leave. And she started blasting in tongues. See, to the skeptics, they, they think that what we do here is, is the skeptics think that what we do here is fun. Come to church. We are taught the word of God. You see, when you are in trouble, what you have been hearing and saying is what will come out of you. Especially when you are dying. If you go to the hospital, when people are dying, they will say, Miruwo. Miruwo. But here, mommy got her from the thrones of death. Eh? And she set her will against death. No, no, oh sorry, fear who for me no or the nip you. I shall not die. Maroon. The first words that came out of her mouth, according to the next one duty. And some of the can if you know by say say nice another member no way to my wife. I will pray in tongues and leave. I said, my cocker suck as a room. She started later go. Brano costica. Brano costica. You know what? When she was doing this, she was still not conscious. In fact, one of the patients on duty who I knew her, you know, at the uh, Capital City Hospital, the intensive care unit used to be the first door, and then the ward was there. So one of the patients whom we knew was at the last ward. And so when she saw me, she said, Hey, daddy, mommy, up on prayer. Hey, mommy, up on prayer. My hand, you know, I was a mess mommy. When you know, I turn on one prayer, them. See, but when the Holy Ghost takes over, are you listening to me carefully? There is a place in your life where the Holy Ghost Himself makes intercession for us because we don't know what to say, we don't know what we should pray, but the Holy Ghost Himself makes intercession. The Holy Ghost took over her spirit. Yes, I man. 26 years ago. She's still alive. Once, once, uh, jokingly she said, Jawo, she be weird, Jawo. I'm not Mr. Luan, I dream well. I said, she be weird, and jump, and jump over in time, time, brother. Hey, ministry, you be a Mr. Fuku Church, you ain't in the man. No bad trouble. In Jawana, we didn't want yen mawar. Now, over the heaven, I say, Papi, Papi, Papi. Okay, okay, for sure. For sure, for sure. For sure, for I have a testimony. What does it sound? This testimony, several of people have testimonies. Yeah, for baby, now what does it sound? And we need to keep playing it back. Let me walk to Mrs. Uh, Hayford again. She has a testimony. Again, she saw a testimony. Kate, how old is your firstborn boy? Seventeen. And how old is your secondborn? Five years. Five years. The difference is how many years? Twelve years. And then this one too has come. What you actually do? Another one too is coming. Twelve years. If you do be an intake. Oh yeah, I'll catch him. Okay, hospital. Doctors, young young doctors, some guys, some of them will catch him. If you say, I'll catch my ball. I'll catch my ball. If you say, I'll catch my ball. Because some of them will catch him. But she has a testimony. I can call several people here who have unique divine intervention situations in their lives. These acts of God are a reminder of the fact that God is always good and God will always intervene for you. See, God has brought me and your mom to a place where we can't doubt God again. 
I don't allow any problem to make me sorrowful and no no I've, I've crossed that line I've seen his acts in provision. You know, you know in Cape Coast, pastoring in Cape Coast used to be very tough. You know, be. Oh, this is only here, Augustine, Pastor Augustine. After Christmas, being a Michelle, Michelle or Abra at that time, let me tell you, Kafama and Tim. Michelle said, Ah, Pastor Bedu, is that how you people are pastoring in Cape Coast? <laughs> What's the problem? He said, this Christmas, not even one church member came to greet me. Not even one chicken. I said, I can't go to this. I I can't go to I I I pastored from 1987 full time. I think the first time, was it the first time somebody sent a bag of rice to my house was in 1992. It was a big miracle for me. Hey, mighty miracle. If you have one bag of rice, Mm. You see, there are some things you, can't, you don't forget. There are always some first time things you don't forget. Mm. One bag of rice. Hey, then. In the mutu muto, mutu muto am obrodo. In the me me ya waha no zibiaba. Now Christmas is mehe one. Try on chena Christmas ada. Mehe mehe one zii. Me join you at the phone ba. Any man kuti aswa for hands wa mehe one. My yes, sir. What people say about Cape Coast. Amen. It's not as if we need it. No, we, 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 we don't bring it, but we enjoy our Christmas. But to me, it was a wonderful testimony. That somebody has brought me one bag of rice. Today, I don't only get a bag of rice. I get clothes. I get everything that God touches my sons and daughters and they minister to me. Somebody here, can you tell me you have a testimony? You have a testimony. You have a testimony. Mommy has a testimony. I also have a testimony. Of God's goodness, of God's mercy. See, there's one step between life and death. One step. The right medication or the wrong medication. One step. Between life and death. For mommy, it was the decision of the nurse on duty. God bless nurses who are nurses. Nurses are nurses. Because if you are high, it's not But there are some nurses who are nurses who, in the absence of the doctor, can take a quick decision to save the life. Amen. Anytime you are sick and you have to be in the hospital, I pray that you'll be in the hands of the right doctor Amen. and the right nurse. I am blessed, oh, I have good doctors in my life. I'm blessed, so blessed. Because my doctor cares for me. My nurses also care for me. I have a lot of them in this church. So I want to say that mommy's recovery or resuscitation was a combination of the nurse and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. The nurse did the right thing and when she got up, the Holy Ghost took over. He says, I will pray in tongues and live. I will 
I will. See, sometimes you must set your will against destructive things. Set your will. Set your will against poverty. Set your will against uh, things that don't make progress. Set your will against destructive elements. Death. King Ezekiah. Oyari, he was sick. If you read, if you read Isaiah 38, there's no time, so we can read it. I have just about five minutes more. So. He became very sick and was dying. And the Lord sent the prophet Isaiah to let him know that Isaiah, even though you are in the prime of your life, you are middle age, but it's the right time for you to go. Amen. Amen. Then Ezekiah set her with his will. Now Ezekiah is the person who read Isaiah 38 from verse, uh, verse, verse 6 to 6 to 9. He set his will. Yes, Lord, I can't die now. I say, Rise, move to me. We say, I can't die now. And then later when he recovered, he wrote a poem. Isaiah 38 verse 9, he wrote a poem. That tells you his attitude when King Isaiah brought the bad news. When King Ezekiah was well again, the New Living Translation, verse 9, he wrote this poem. I said, in the prime of my life, must I now enter the place of the dead? Am I to be robbed of the rest of my years? And I said, never again will I see the Lord God while still in the land of the living. Never again will I see my friends or be with those who live in the world. I said, no, I can't die now. See, sometimes we are non challenged against destructive things in our lives. Some of you are non challenged You don't do anything about it. Concerning your life, your spouse, your children, your finances, your destiny, things happen at you, to you that are negative, and you are non challenged You are non challenged some of you live by the way, Cesare, Cesare, is a French. Cesare, Cesare. Whatever will be, let it be. That shouldn't be your life. Whatever will be because of what you want. Are you listening to me, Kevin? When the cockroach gives birth to a cockroach, does the mother take care of the cockroach? Come on. If you meet a small war jekyll, very young one, ask him where's your mother. The moment they are born, they set their will to live to survive. Set your will against any negative see, It's when you set your will that the Holy Ghost comes to help you fight against the opposition. The, the Holy Spirit will stand with you against what you set your will against. No matter the, the diagnosis, no matter the diagnosis, tell yourself, I'm not ready to go. Oh, yes. I have a book, I've preserved that book for so many years. Written a research by a medical student and a journalist. They researched people who were diagnosed to die who didn't die. People who were in the Nazi camps, what they went through and why they survived. And one thing runs along all the lives that team is the team of hope hope uh, 
You see, we have a way we interpret the song. It is better for you to say that than to say that. Mm, oh, yeah, yeah. I think it's better to say that. To have hope for your future. There was, this, there was this story in that book about this man who was diagnosed with a certain kind of cancer in the stomach. Recently, my daughter, Dr. Wuku, invited me to a certain seminar. And I, 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 was, I, I was supposed to play the open prayer and then maybe leave, but I stayed there to listen to the first session. And I enjoyed it. The professors from South Africa, they were talking. And the main speaker said something for the first time. He says that all of us, if we live, if we live very long, we will die with one cancer or another. All of us, that's what it says. We will die with one cancer. It's, it's a bit scary. Mm, so we'll continue to take communion against cancer here. Mm. Because cancer, no, but I'm right. Back at two days, my made in 90 years, and that cancer, not by now. But two days, we made in 90, and I'm cancer. I was a cancer, no, 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 I can have some energy and life. So this man was diagnosed, diagnosed, and she had a certain bad cancer, according to the story. The bad cancer had destroyed the intestines. So they were going to um, open him up and cut off some of the parts of his body. According to the report in that book, when they opened him up, him up, they saw that the cancer was far gone. There was nothing they could do. So they sold him up. And they gave him seven months to live. Can I tell you something? The man died 11 years later. Now, he didn't die sick, he died by a car accident. Now, I the me no kuno can or boy. So the doctors who were on his case went to see his daughter. He had only one daughter. Now, baby self will paint the meta to fear and watch and you will wound them baby. And they told the daughter, says, you know what? We diagnosed your father. Your father should have died 11 years ago. Did your father have any special medication he was taking that we didn't know? No. My father was still smoking. Some of them will be diagnosed with it. still smoking. Just anything special about your mother, your father? My father, he was always happy. He refused to be sorrowful. He was retired. He would always be singing in the house, making himself happy, making himself happy, making himself happy. Because the Bible says, a merry heart, do what good like medicine. Even though the man was not a Christian, didn't know the Bible, he practiced what's, what is in the Bible. A merry heart. This man was diagnosed to die. He died 11 years old, not by the sickness, but a car knocked him down. Dogged determination on the spare of the moment is a reflection of years of programming in the church and in the house. 
When the challenges come, what you have been hearing and saying is what will come out. So you come to a church like this and you find this pastor who talks too much. Trying to tell you that. Don't give up on hope. Don't forget what the Lord has done. Forget not his benefits. Play back his benefits. It's a faith booster. It will encourage you not to give up in life. See, when you keep hearing these things, me and mommy grew up in the church so many years, and on the deathbed, you see, sometimes we make confession, say after me, I shall not die, I will live. See, some of these things, when you are saying them, what you don't know is that it is being stored, stored somewhere in your spirit and in your mind. So whenever you are pressed, I for negative, are you listen to me what you are going through right now some of you are going through something to be a diagnosis of marital difficulties your son or daughter who is, who is somewhat I know you are going through something and sometimes you wonder what is going to happen I'm telling you what is going to happen God is going to happen Jesus is going to happen he will show up for you even in the throes of death are you listening to what I'm saying he's God and he's going to make a way for you come here Made our way so against the wall. Come on, sing it, child. Be on your feet, everybody. He made our way, and we're standing here. Come on, wave your hand and glory.
the sermon I preached this morning, that God will make a way. When, when you are wondering what it's going to do, listen to some of the testimonies I've shared. My brother, my brother here behind the organ, he and the wife married, had their first baby after seven years. Eight years. After eight years in marriage. Today they have their third daughter, three girls. I've told them I want one boy that they'll be named after me. I'll put my name on him. It's my brother. We listen to Pastor Taki. We saw it here 11 years. So when you are going through it, you can recollect what the Lord has done. Are you listening to me carefully? You're going through it. Oh my, he's done you just two years of marriage. You are crying. Just five years. Eight years. Eleven years. If I at, at a wonderful Jesus conference, one pastor, 15 years of marriage. California, our California pastor. Married for 15 years. Had your first baby after 15 years of marriage. And they brought their baby all the way from California to the wonderful conference. Wonderful Jesus conference. A pointer to what God will do for you. Don't allow any challenge, any difficulty to make you lose faith in God. Are you listening to me? Don't lose faith in God. God is always good. God is faithful. What he has done for others, he will do for you. So keep trusting him. Keep hoping in the Lord. Yes, come on. I'm 25 years old. I don't, I don't feel sister in my bones at all. Though. Sister, you are old, my most also. Hey. I feel like I'm 25 years because of what God is doing in my life, because of the attitude of hope that I have, attitude of graciousness and gratefulness. Makes you look like you know. Stop growing old. Stop growing old talking about your age. If I almost forgot that I was 60 until some time ago, I heard mommy discussing with somebody. I'm to you. I'm you. I'm going to you. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. I'm you. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to 
Leave. Be happy. In spite of the challenges and circumstances, come on, stop dying. Stop losing your life. Keep on living. Keep on living. Come on. Keep on living. Hallelujah. Mountains are moving. Yes. Mountains are moving. Mountains are moving. Mountains are moving. Stronghold are breaking. Stronghold are breaking. Stronghold are breaking. Stronghold are breaking. When I come to say go, I say yes. When I come to say I'm dead, I say I'm alive. Mountains are moving. Mountains are moving. Stronghold are breaking. Stronghold are breaking. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. of the men is our empowerment, empowerment week we fast and pray for three days so this Wednesday Thursday and Friday we are going to fast and pray and one thing, listen but you catch every problem problem you have got the first December Amen we want to say enough is enough Amen. We are going to set our we set your will against anything negative. But when you come here at 5 30, we'll have a short time of situation. We'll just go and pray in tongues for one hour. It's long since we pray in tongues for a long time. And we set our will and our mind against a particular problem in your life. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, empowerment week. We are fasting and praying. We'll meet here at 5 30 and close by 7.30. Please, you may be seated. God bless you. You have in your, in your chair this move envelope. It's our project offering. Our project offering. Currently, we, we need to quickly complete the electrical works. A few, a few more cities will be able to complete the electrical works, get all the bulbs in place. And then we we'll go to the children's block downstairs there. We want to complete the ground floor of the children's block so that our kids can have a place for service, our teens can have a place for service, and then the adults can have a place for service. That's our major item now, and we are trusting God that as you give towards this project, the Lord will bless you. Amen. Amen. So put a good offering in the envelope, and if you brought your tithe or you pledged during our program, power convention, your pledge is ready. Walk forward, let's receive your tithe and your pledge. Quickly, quickly, we have the second part of the service. Your tight, your pledge, work for it, let's receive it. Okay. Mommy tells me last week, Pastor Charles also raised some funds. You made some pledge. If the pledge is ready, come. The Lord bless you for all your faithfulness, for your commitment. Amen. May the Lord remember your offerings. Amen. And cause a breakthrough for your life in any area of your life. Amen. Stand up on your feet, everybody. Lift up your envelope, the move envelope. This is our project offering. Stand up, lift it up, your move envelope. If you don't have any.